Welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to learn some tricks for using strings. So far in this tutorial we have used a lot of strings, but really the only thing that we've done to manipulate the string is using concatenation to chain a few strings together before we print it. There are a lot of useful tools and ways for dealing with strings. I think some of them warrant their own video, but in this one I'm going to go over just a few things that I think that could be useful for you now or very soon in this tutorial. So the first one will be escaping characters, the next one will be string literals, and then after that, string interpolation. And the reason I want to do all three of these in one video is because they're tools to help you create more complex strings easily. So the first thing I want to go over is escaping characters. So we've had a bunch of strings and they've all worked out of the box, but an example of one that wouldn't is a quote because we know that strings start and end with the double quote character and anything inside is our string. The problem is, is if we actually want to have a quote like this, where he said quote something end quote, we can't do that because our syntax is like, hey, our string begins here and ends here. And now we have some invalid syntax and there's a, there's a whole string over here. It, it doesn't know that these quotes belong within the string because the string is created with double quotes. So what we need to do to make our string work is we need to use the backslash character to create what is called an escape sequence. So when you add a backslash to this double quote, it creates a single item and you can see the color is different that it's going to be treated just like any other letter. So no longer can you use this to open or close a string. And no longer will it give you an error because it's going to be treated just like any other letter in your string. This is also known as creating a regular string literal because it causes it to be interpreted literally as a double quote rather than something that starts and ends a string. Which makes me realize that I should have put the word verbatim here because this will be talking about verbatim string literals. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a print going. And let's just print our quote just so we can see that our quotes are working as part of our string. And that takes us to our next use case, which is going to be used very soon in this series, and that's a file path. So in programming, you very often have to deal with files in your file system. So you may have to say file path, some folder, slash, some file dot txt. Well, now you can see that we have an error because we have an unrecognized escape sequence. So we just used the backslash to escape our double quote. So now we know that the backslash is our escape character. So to create a backslash in our string, we actually need to put backslash backslash. And that will create an escape sequence of just a backslash. And now our path will be happy. And print like a regular file path. And that's not too bad. But what if we had... A network path. Now a network path starts with two backslashes, has the name of a computer, then maybe some folder, and some file. So now to make this path okay, if we escape just these and print our network path, we're only going to get our backslash for computer. So if we ended up using this variable to try to find something, we would get an error because this isn't a valid path. So we actually will have to escape each backslash and we would need four because this would be one sequence and this would be the other creating two and then these would be singles. So now we would have a valid path. Now before we move on, I wanna point out that we use the backslash in all of these examples to create string literal escape sequences so that we can use quotes and the backslash character itself in our string. But there are also other escape sequences that can be useful, such as the new line sequence. So I could say this is line one, this is line two, and if we run this, it's going to print as it always prints. But say we put a new line escape sequence backslash n, and then we run it. Now we have two separate lines because this new line escape sequence created a new line on our console. Now there are a lot of other escape sequences, but these should get you a long way and let you know kind of how they work so you can find what you need if you run into another one. 
So now let's talk about verbatim string literals. To create a verbatim string literal, you start out with an at symbol and then create your string. So in our quote example, we used a backslash to say, hey, interpret this quote literally. Well, this at symbol tells this entire string to be interpreted literally or verbatim. So what that does for us, and also probably the most common usage, is we can take a file path like this and not have to use our escape characters to represent the slashes in the file path because all of these are automatically interpreted literally. So these are great for creating file paths, but that's pretty much where I stop using them because since the whole thing is literal, you can't use escape sequences in them like a new line. Because if we did this and wrote our literal, then we're just going to end up calling it slash in some file. It's not going to escape sequence this into a new line character. It's just going to be literal. So this is great when you don't need to do anything but escape these backslashes. So the one exception to the literalness of this is the fact that we still need a way to escape quotes. So if we had something in here that was a quote and there was something in the quote, we would still have the problem that we don't know when our string begins and when it ends. So we know we can't use the escape character like up here. So to escape a double quote in a verbatim string literal, you have to put a second double quote. So now this is escaped as one quote and this is escaped as one quote so if we run this it shows up like you would expect the last caveat of verbatim string literals that i'm going to mention is one where people misuse them for formatting because in a normal string we can use these escape sequences to insert things like new lines we could insert a slash t for a tab you can't do that in these but since they are literal you could actually put an enter and some tabs in here and when you print this it's going to print exactly how you wrote it in your editor. And this is extremely bad, hard to read. You don't know what's in here. You know this is one new line and one tab. But looking at this, you have no idea what all of this space is. So stay away from doing that. Okay, last but definitely not least, string interpolation. Now, we haven't talked about any sort of string formatting before. We have used concatenation to slam some strings together, but that's about it. Now, there's several different ways that you can use in C Sharp to format strings, but I'm only going to go over interpolation because I think it's the easiest, most readable way to do it. So first of all, let's take our concatenated string and let's put it down here so we can have a comparison. And now let's create interpolated string like that. And now let's create the same string, but using string interpolation. So similar to our verbatim literal string that starts with an at, to start an interpolated string, we start with a dollar sign. And then from there, your string writes very naturally. So we would start off the same way. And then once we needed to add a variable to our string, we just need a set of curly braces. And then we can put the variable directly in our string. Next up, we would need a space followed by our last name variable. So that's exactly what we would do. We would put a space and then our last name variable and then we would put a comma, and then we would put our age, and we would be done. And you can see that whereas this is six strings, three of which are variables separated by our concatenation operator, this reads as one string with our variables surrounded by curly braces. So you can much more easily see what you're actually going to get. We can grab our old right line from up here, go ahead and put it twice, and print our interpolated string after our concatenated string. And you can see that it prints exactly the same thing, but this one is a much easier way to do it. So to recap, you can escape characters like quotes and backslashes with the backslash character to create an escape sequence. You can use escape sequences that are predefined like slash n and slash t to create things like new lines and tabs in your strings. You can use verbatim string literals to make things like file paths a lot easier to read because you do not have to escape the characters inside of them. And you can use string interpolation to very easily format your string instead of having to worry about a lot of concatenation. Next up, we're gonna talk about some of the more commonly used math functions that are available to you in C-sharp. 
So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, and until next time, as always, take care.